Hey guys, this is a bit of a debacle. We're trying to run stone across this top and we don't want to give away that we're running thin veneer. So we're going to run corners across here. Since it's a big open space, we're going to do a center keystone with some soldier course of stone next to it. This is going to be a pickle, but we've got some tricks. I'm going to show you over here on the bench. We've pre-built the whole contraption. So what we did, we just took a, a two by eight, uh, laid it down, figured out our dead center and where the uh, end wall is. The other weird trick, we're not gonna cut it till the last minute, but we're actually gonna make, make sure that the last stone oversteps the end wall. The last thing you want is to have your, your uh, keystone arrangement come short of the end wall or it'll look like it could drop. So we did all the math for that. We started with a center keystone. We actually had to custom order these a little bit longer, long-legged sides of corners. Uh, started with a keystone with a little bit of a taper on both sides, centered it, and then worked each stone carefully, looking at both the bottoms and the tops tight together, because this thing is pinch fit. So now we're going to be buttering this thing up and putting it on the wall, but there's one more step that's really essential here. Uh, and I have great faith in my mortar, I know it's going to stick, but you think about a door and all the jarring of slamming and opening of that door and the movement that's around there, and the fact that I don't have mortar joints that's binding this together. Uh, I want to do a mechanical connection between the stone and the substrate. And what we do there is some green deck screws. Don't use, you, you gotta use something that can, uh, that won't rust or get eaten up by the mortar. But we use a uh, regular uh, grip right green deck screws and we carve this crazy little indentation here, which isn't really that hard to do. I mean, you, you think that, oh man, I'll just take a hammer drill and I'll just drill on an angle here so we can get that in. That does not work because a hammer drill, once it gets close to the back side of the of the uh, hole it blows out you'd guarantee you'd have nothing but blowdowns here if you use that method so we use an angle grinder I start with a plunge cut then I won't do it with the angle grinder running because it's horribly loud and awful so I would start with my plunge cut right then with my diamond blade I'd set it down in and rock it back and forth so this hole is actually very tight out here but inside it's just right so now when this guy goes up on the wall we're going to butter this back we're going to push it on we're going to make sure we got good ooze all the way around then with our uh, screwdriver we're going to send that screw in and that's going to give our good mechanical connection you want to just tighten that and not go beyond of course because you don't want to blow out that stone that's our sneaky tricks, and pretty soon we're going to have a really nice keystone arrangement really setting off the whole front of the house, I think. And that's a trick. Alright, we've got some mortar in the lath. Uh, that's the way we apply things. We don't do a scratch coat. Ah! Don't do a scratch coat, Robert and I. Uh, no, we don't do a scratch coat ahead of time. We do the scratch coat at the same time we're putting the stone on the wall because then there's no cold joint. Uh, I'm going to show you the crazy trick we're doing here. We've already pre-made this little toe nailing, toe screwing notch. So I'm going to push this guy up. This is a particularly tight tolerance keystone arrangement because it's dry stacked. We're not doing a mortar joint. I'm going to put that guy on there. Smush it till we get that nice ooze coming out everywhere. Check all of our edges. And then, I'm going to try a left-handed toe screwing. Probably it would stay there without the screw. But given all the factors, I would much rather have a mechanical connection involved to be sure. But that is the process. Since 
Normally, if we had mortar joints here, we'd have a toe screw on both sides and we'd sneak them in. But here, we're only able to get it in on the outside. But that's packed in. It can't go away from the screw and it can't drop. So we're going to continue that process through till we got it on. We'll catch you up on the last one. All right, so we want this keystone arrangement to look as real as possible. So the, the last stone that overhangs has got to overhang. Otherwise, it looks like whoop, the whole thing could fall off. And making that cut is a funny little detail. It's kind of a pain in the neck to make these two come together. But you can see when it's worked out right, it, uh, it really authenticates the whole look. So we have this. This is the last piece of the keystone arrangement. It's already been carved to match up with its neighbor. It's got the notch piece here for the screw. And then the final touch is notching back out, bringing it back onto a thin veneer and uh, applying that piece. And then we're gonna work this next stone in to this point. You wanna strategize as you're doing your layout from your center line over, not to end. This would be very embarrassing if that stone ended right in line with here someone would be afraid to walk underneath because the whole thing would cave in on their head. So that's one more detail on the Keystone Arrangement.